Hi, so I'm Rehana Musaji, um, known as the Barefoot Facilitator now, but formerly the member of the Mayoral Committee for Transport in the city of Johannesburg for the period 2006 through to February 2013. And hi, I'm Michelle Wu. I serve as one of the four citywide councillors for the city council in Boston and just so fangirly sitting next to Rehana right now. It's lovely to, to be in Yeah, Boston, welcome to Michelle. Boston. How's your experience been? It's been wonderful. Um, got here on Monday and have had the opportunity to really experience the city, its transit system, uh, meet fascinating people in Boston and just, you know, amazed at the exciting work that, that's happening here. And uh, have heard a lot about the women councillors in this council who are really making things happen in real ways. Well, we're excited to learn from you while you're here. Transit and transportation is something that I think is, is beginning to emerge as, as an issue that people recognize is really fundamental to so much else. So I'm curious, how did you first kind of personally connect to transit and transportation as an important issue? So, I mean, it was interesting when, when I was appointed member of the mayoral committee, um, you're a lay person, you know, you're not an expert, you're not a technical expert in transport, and immediately one tends to go back to your own life experiences. I had grown up um, as a young girl in a group area, a apartheid group area, uh, on interestingly what was a gravel road. So it wasn't surfaced and it had that experience. Um, my own dad had kind of stood for 30, 35 kilometers a day on public transport and knowing the lack of dignity that that came with. And then as a young university student, had experienced racial discrimination on our bus system. And kind of those three things were all things that would inform what the work that I do in, in the period. What about yourself, Michelle? I came to this partway through my career on the city council. I've served for five years now. And when I first ran for office, I was living in the South End, which is kind of, you can see on the map is right, you know, it's a, you could walk from City Hall to the South End. It's a very short bus ride. You never have to think about getting anywhere. You're right in the heart of downtown. All the surrounding neighborhoods around here are very walkable. So transportation wasn't necessarily top of mind then. Um, and then, you know, as these neighborhoods are becoming more pricey, and my family, along with many others, uh, in trying to think about where we could afford to buy a house, could not even begin to look at the prices immediately where we were renting. So we moved to Rosendale. We live now in a two-family home where my mom's downstairs and we're upstairs and it's, it's just a wonderful situation. The only stressor is that the neighborhood is at least 45 minutes away from downtown, however you think about getting there. Um, and often, unfortunately, it's even longer. And the choices from my neighborhood are very stark. We can either walk to the commuter rail, which is right in the neighborhood. It is $6.25 one way to connect to the Orange Line subway, which is then an additional fare, and two, two plus dollars there, um, to then transfer and, and get to downtown. Or we can walk to the bus sort of hub in the neighborhood, wait for who knows how long, then you know, there's a free transfer, but it's compa compare the two experiences, one is predictable, on time, usually um, clean and comfortable. The other is crowded, it's unpredictable. You don't know how long you're going to wait. The starkest difference is that the bus is usually almost entirely people of color. And when I'm on the commuter rail, often I'll be the only person of color on the train car. The issue of kind of cost of transport, time spent, waiting for transport, right. which could be time utilized, especially I think when you, when you look at women, mm -hmm. uh, your multiplicity of roles and you know taking away from valuable time with family and so forth, uh, that the way in which transport impacts quality of life feels, you know, there's a lot more that needs to be done. In many ways, it's, it's really about that political will to, to push through from the pilot elements that I'm seeing here into a potentially full bus rapid transit system. Yeah, and the pilot has been incredible. It, it takes that corridor connecting what was a very unpredictable bus ride to the Orange Line and has changed it from, you know, sometimes it was 20, 30 minutes stuck in traffic to 
six minutes, 10 minutes. I don't need to pay for the more expensive ride and we still have issues of capacity and, and accessibility, and particularly when you're, uh, you talk about the impact on women and families. Uh, when you have a stroller, when you're in a wheelchair, there's still a lot of work to do. But we have seen now that the city on its own can take these steps that dramatically change people's access. I was particularly struck, uh, watched a documentary about uh, Roxbury and the kind of history of a community that feels um, that government has continuously broken promises yeah. uh, to, to this community and uh, the, the kind of sense of feeling that we're not seen and we're not heard in what we're requiring and, and really I think an unnecessary exacerbation of, of tension mm -hmm. that can be overcome for that community even though the assumption is we have to get light rail because we were told at some point that it will be uh, we'll get a service equal or better to the one that's being taken from us but really not a deepening of the understanding that with a good bus rapid transit system you could get many of the elements uh, that go with any other public transport at a fraction of the cost, mm -hmm. actually. And I think that's always been on the shoulders of, of government, that often there's a, a brilliant idea, and even if it's something that other cities have had experience with, when there's a gap and, and the community hasn't been engaged as to uh, why this would be beneficial or that this, this, you know, folks, it wasn't an idea that came from the community because they have felt for so long that, that City Hall might not have had them at the top of their minds. That key is civic engagement and community feeling like they are driving the conversation. How do you bring people together around these changes? I mean, one of the issues other than BRT, which feels like a, a much softer, not tangible thing mm -hmm. to do, was, was really a values in transport project that we ran, uh, which was to say, what are the values that we want that should underpin our transit system and our transport department and the way in which we interact with communities and what are the values that communities want to see uh, shaping our transport system. And we went through a very long and consultative process in actually deciding on these five values and finally came up with accountability, cooperation, honesty, respect and Ubuntu, which is a uniquely African concept about I actually see my own humanity through your humanity and I am human because mm -hmm. I am because you are. Mm -hmm. The sense of communities shaping, communities saying, uh, having architects and designers sitting down with communities and saying what should the station look like, what are the elements, mm -hmm. having communities mm -hmm. name stations mm -hmm. uh, and also when, when you don't have a reference point in your own country, in our case we didn't have one on our continent, uh, to say to people, this is what a bus rapid transit system looks like. So we brought photographs from Bogota, we brought videos, we built a model of what it could look like, yeah. but still just for people to actually engage and yeah. ask, you know, and, and often very pertinent questions, like look at the model and say, what does this mean for children's safety as mm -hmm. they have to cross uh, to get to a station mm -hmm. in, in the middle of the, the street? Um, you know, all of those things where, where people really think about things that, you haven't right. thought about, and uh, a technical person hasn't thought about. It will be their lives that yeah. are affected by, by that. And, and to bring that in, and I think, I mean, issues of, of gentrification feel feel very real. Yeah. And, you know, for me, the, the issue is you know, not necessarily being anti-car, because I understand that cars have an important role in the city, but that often the sense that we have more time and space for boxes of steel than we do for human beings. Right. The other, I think, related issue that we're advocating for in Boston is the expansion of safe cycling infrastructure. And you think about the opportunities to move so many people, again, on, on that same public shared space of our streets. And I was not a believer that Boston could do it, given how dense our, our communities are, how narrow the streets are, and just the culture until I went to Amsterdam and Copenhagen and just the range of possibilities it opens up for people from every background to have a more reliable, affordable option. But we are you know, baked into the segregation of the city by income, by race. It's tricky to figure out how to make sure we're investing equitably in any improvements and bike lanes 
can be seen, have been seen as sort of an elitist, um, you know, these are the young tech people who could afford to take another way of transportation. Before I resigned, we'd already started the building of some bicycle lanes, uh, but there's been a massive pushback by the incoming uh, Democratic Alliance government against the bicycle lanes, uh, really saying that people have no access to basic sanitation and water, uh, and the bicycle lanes are, are actually seen as a very elitist thing. Right, that they're much more pressing issues. They're more pressing issues and pressing needs. And I mean, that, that's that been a real pity uh, mm -hmm. because I think the, the lack of understanding between health issues and, and a range of other things, we're just not seeing the linkages between different aspects of life. Um, and, you know, the uptake on the cycle lanes has, has not been great, mm -hmm. uh, but of course, we haven't built a network yet, mm -hmm, and right. possibly where we've built doesn't actually serve the points of origin and destination that people actually needed to go to. Along those lines, if you had a superpower for for the city, what what would it be? Yeah, I think my superpower would be um, how do we we actually create love and connection in our city um, in real and authentic ways? And and what about you, Michelle? When I'm asked what the single biggest change that I think would transform the city would be, I always say it would be finding a way to make public transit free for all residents. Um, so that, I think there's a way to still work towards that, so I'd just leave it, if I, if I could do it like that, I would, I would love to use a superpower to do it. Well, this has been just such an honor and pleasure. I'm really glad that we had the chance to benefit from your expertise in Boston, and hope to visit one day. <laughs> Please do, and wishing you all the luck.